peace, love, and harmony to you all. Welcome back to another exclusive fan-inspired analysis of one of the biggest discussions of the time. Who are considered the big three? Now, the war of songs between K.Dot, Drake, and J. Cole sparked this phenomenal fire in hip-hop nationwide. But right along with this debate sprouted the talks about who are the big three in hip-hop media. Now this is a topic that mostly fans are debating, but out of the Joe Budden podcast, Big Academics, Vlad Television, and No Jumper. Only one of those four platforms have been trying to prove they belong in the big three of hip-hop discussion. We are not here to focus on the debate on which one of these four belong in the big three debate. An extremely wise man, Dr. John Henry Clark, once said that, it makes no sense to debate when you are not dealing with equality of substance and content. That was a paraphrase of the late great Honorable John Henry Clark. But the point is that, out of all other hip-hop media platforms, the Joe Budden podcast is leagues and levels above the rest of the competition. Before moving forward, I understand the natural thought that I might be looking down on the other platforms and putting the Joe Budden podcast on a pedestal. This is very far from the truth. I am simply going to exhibit an analysis of why the Joe Budden podcast adds something that the others can't do, while the X-Men BP can do it effortlessly every episode. For the record, I am still a heavy supporter of Big Academics because he has the most exclusive takes, interviews, and crash outs. Big Academics has the pulse of the young legend's era of hip-hop, and we all saw him pay his dues and work hard to the position he is in now. I am still a supporter of Vlad Television because he has been consistently delivering the most exclusive documentary-style interviews of most living legends in the culture. Vlad and his background with the beef documentaries and battle rap scene back in the earlier days add stripes to his platform. I am still a heavy supporter of No Jumper and the erratic entertainment value that it constantly adds to the mix. The best thing that No Jumper provides is a platform to highlight new talent. Once Mojo Adam enters, and tries to control everything for the sake of ratings or ego, is the only time that No Jumper takes losses, in my opinion. But I say all of this, to highlight the consistent greatness of the Joe Budden podcast. It was only right to fuse these legends with some superhero legends. Before we officially begin, shoutouts to Joe Netto, who can bend and twist any story into a hilarious podcast moment. Shoutouts to M. Storm, who reigns down supremely with an always-needed divine feminine energy and uncanny consciousness or peace to the platform. Shoutouts to Flipper Rain for his wild and hilarious random bursts of energy and dominant intelligence for being on the screen. Shoutouts to Parksit, who has an extremely high hip-hop intelligence and can debate anyone about the best lyricists in hip-hop history. Shoutouts to Icy Ice Man, who is mostly cool, calm, and collective while having a lot to brag about but remains humble. Most don't know that Icy Iceman is brothers with one of the top living legends in battle rap, Arsenal the Rebel. Shoutouts to More Fish, who has some of the funniest one-liners and a balanced enough intellect to be able to change up and have the most versatile conversations or debates. Now that we've met the crew, let's start analyzing the simple ways that this team is winning consistently. The thoughts, views, and opinions expressed by this podcast as well as its hosts are for entertainment purposes only. I repeat, it is not serious. It is not real. No one is exposing, revealing, indicting, or telling you anything about themselves. Also, we do not encourage you to try this at home. We are trained professionals. We do not have your best interests at heart or our own. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Like I said earlier, this is all about highlighting the consistent greatness of the X-Men BP. Let's analyze the powers of Joe Netto in this brilliant disclaimer. Disclaimers are clearly for legal purposes and to clarify the intent of anything you may perceive, but I remember when this was first introduced to the podcast, and I always thought it was a temporary joke. But he turned this into a podcast masterclass. This may seem like a disclaimer, solely to prevent people from trying to take anyone's words too serious from the podcast, but I can see an advantage that it has added to the actual podcast hosts. By having this disclaimer announced every episode, the host can now speak more freely and not have fear for potentially crossing a line when telling a story or joke, for the sake of entertainment. With this disclaimer, it brings everyone one step closer to speaking without biting their tongues, something that we can clearly see most platforms can't provide. Now remember, this is an episode, 719, that you should check out immediately and catch their thoughts on all the big three hip-hop beef, right before K.Dropped Euphoria. 
We will be highlighting how the podcast was able to create some of the best moments for content with simple conversations about their lives, and not relying on focusing on the trending topics of the Big Three debate. Let's break down how this podcast realistically ranks supreme. Last but certainly not least, all of you beautiful people are here. How's everybody doing? How's everybody feeling? You're smelling good. You're looking good. How was your weekend? Anything exciting happening? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. First, Big Mel. I just restful weekend. Restful week, all right, skipping you. Right from the start, with Joe simply asking M Storm about her weekend, the fact that she said it was restful was enough for Joe to create a funny moment. Besides the natural comedy in this, Joe was able to realize that a restful weekend is not usually the best thing to discuss for content on a podcast. This was quick and subtle, but genius on the spot thinking. The best thing is the professionalism of Melissa Ford. She just stayed calm and laughed it off with everyone else. This is more important when you think about all of the wild rumors about the contracts and if she will stay on the podcast or not in the future. In the name of most fans that I interact with, Melissa Ford is a staple on the show and always delivers great energy and eye candy. Just like she did during those classic hip-hop video vixen modeling days. There are still countless men who are free and locked up that worship Melissa Ford with pictures and posters still hung up from the King magazine days. These supporters are equally fans of getting to know this side of M Storm that we are exclusively seeing on the podcast. The peaceful Zen consciousness is a major and very underrated a tribute that Melissa Ford brings, which is a rare gem to be cherished. Let's see what's next. Well, now, before we skip you, your shoes have reminded me. Mm -hmm. a it's a sad day. Oh. Sorry, sorry, that's, sorry. That's, that's SH. Okay, sorry. Man, that's <laughs> first sentence in my suit. <laughs> now look, this is right on timing. We must highlight the excellence and genius in M Storm's bondage comment. A simple clip of Melissa Ford speaking on how she is wearing shows that can potentially remind men of bondage will sell the show by itself in most circumstances. You could tell that she wasn't just saying it for content and really thought that Joe was reminded of bondage from how the shoes looked, which makes it clear that she was the one who really had bondage on her mind. Again, this is simple and subtle, but absolutely goes a long way to most men and women regardless. Back to the regular flow. Right. Your shoes are reminding me it's a sad day for many, 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 many women out there. Express is filed for bankruptcy. These shoes There's are no not more fucking Express. Express. <laughs> now, Express the is train. <laughs> now, Express is in paying $1.5 billion worth of debt. A train to but, now, train. <laughs> but, now, but now homeboy that owned Toys R Us and all that shit is scheduled to buy it. So you may still be able to get these shits somewhere. <laughs> hey, let's it's, cool, a sad day. it's a sad day for Express indeed. I'm not sure how many already knew about this, but I had no idea that Express was filing for bankruptcy. Especially after that long run it had all these decades. For most people who are not familiar, Express is a store that was popular in most inner urban cities and sold clothing for women that wanted to look as sexy as possible, but not spend too much money in the process. I must admit, I actually grew up thinking that Express was like a designer shoe store for women, until I grew up and realized it was the source of fashion for a lot of women. I dated that didn't really have the money to buy designer. Shoutouts to all who did their thing during the Express eras. The funniest moments here were the reaction that M Storm gave and the jokes that Flip was shouting out. Mel Colling got offended and stood on the fact that her shoes was not from Express. That was hilarious. Especially after the way Joe started to deliver the story with that humor. I must admit the shoes looked wonderful, but it was irrelevant after Joe mad that joke. Wonderful shoes or not, that was hilarious. When Flip started to laugh and name the New York City Express train lines, that was another natural and great moment of content. Remember they are only discussing random topics and thoughts from the question of how everyone's weekend was. Let's hear the rest of this Express story. You're a hater. This is a sad day. These are yes. Express. So this shit Hold matters. Hold silence for Express Fallon and Baker. Hold silence. She went with say what they are. All right, there we go. No. What's Priscilla. up? Priscilla. 
Okay? They're Italian, so fuck off. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't saying they were express. I was Bullshit. saying they reminded me. Because Express got virgin me. They do. <laughs> Bullshit. I don't want to use plenty of time. So but I'm they like, don't have no rope shit. They have the... I would hey, have the strings. Bitch, wake up in the bar. Oh my God, I don't have no shoes. I was fucking those girls. Oh my God, I can't be a beer foot. <laughs> hey, come on, girl. That's Just right up there in the little, the little, uh, what that shit? That's a little complex. Yeah. Come on, we go right to the express where there's no parking. I'm going to drive around this thing. <laughs> you go run it. Take out some chew. I got it. Oh, what's up? Talk to me. I don't know what's up. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? This is a very funny story. I love how M. Storm stood on business and let it be known that her shoes were not from Express and Italian. It's hilarious to hear her stand up against Joe and call him a hater for trying to say that her shoes reminded him of Express. But honestly, they really do naturally resemble some shoes from Express. For those who may not know, Express was selling shoes that were very similar to the top designer shoes in fashion that most women wanted but could not afford. Just like the way Mr. Hellcat was sued for selling shoes that were too close to be looking like the Uptowns, Express was taking the foundational concept of other shoes and making their own versions of the shoes. Joe made a great point and perfect tangent from Mel's restful weekend. Let's think about that again. This hilarious story only exists because of Melissa form. M Storm's restful weekend caused Joe to try to move on to find some quick content to discuss in her sexy shoes caused Joe to bring up an express story that he knew most of his viewers could relate to. For the record, even though this was a store for female fashion, as men shopping for gifts or quick outfits for women, it was able to trigger a reaction from a large audience. Let's see who's next. Oh, what's up, talk to me? What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, what's up? How was your weekend? My weekend was well. Weekend was well. I'm just working. Talking it bunch. All right. Working, working this weekend, just, you know, getting content done, that's all. Yeah, Yo, you're a monster. Yeah, it's a little well. How was your weekend? I was cool. I went uh I went out of town to see my family. My mother's birthday was this weekend, so I went oh, back to see my mom. Mama ish. I am a big fan of brotherhood and love to see it displayed in all settings. Unity is always the key in my mind, and the fusion of the different personalities can show and prove that there is genuine love between the hosts. Queen's Flip also had a simple weekend to discuss as he was focused on working on making new content. With all of the back and forth arguments we've seen with Flip and others on the podcast, it was great to see how more Fish showed Flip love and respect for the way that he is grinding and hustling with the content. Although Flip Arrain is one of the newest members of the squad, it's nice to know that he can potentially be motivating others to use the opportunity to start making content of their own. It might be a good idea for some of them to team up and do shows together. The way that more Fish and Flip Arrain just transitioned from one story to the other is dynamic. Shoutouts to Mama More Fish. It was great to see that the two were not letting their egos get in the way of each other. Let's hear this next story. You see all my out there? Huh? You see all my out there? I'm just asking. Yo, stop. I'm going your ass. I know some bullshit. I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't, I ain't flying um, Economy Plus in a minute. So this is my first time flying Economy Plus with my girl and the baby. Mm. From where to where? From just from North to Richmond. Quick flight. Quick flight. Hour, 45 minutes, some shit. Mm. Bro, shit you couldn't was, do it? That shit was a monster. Man. I'm 6'2", nigga. That shit was different. I, yo, dog, I, they ain't had no more first-class flights coming back from Richmond. I drove all the way to D.C. to get a first-class flight. Damn. So, I so you. remember the conversation we just had about, like, the bag being going in? Yeah, things yeah, like yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Add to the bag. So, add yeah. to that. So you got a rental to drive to D.C. <laughs> so to get, a, you get to first get class. Get class. No, I rented the car when I got to uh, Richmond, but... I went to D.C. from Richmond just so I could. That, the funny shit sure. about what you're saying is on those 45 minute flights, they, sometimes the, the first class don't even really be a first class. No, nah, I don't. But, no, but it, a bigger seat. It's a bigger seat. It's a wider seat. Front. It's yeah, a wider seat for your fucking hips. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> hey, dog. You need to wide. That was crazy. That was crazy. That was, that was, that was, that was crazy. That was, <laughs> that was <laughs> different. Why, yeah, that was so why you just get the exit row? Nigga, they don't lean back. It's a 40 minute flight and it's still skinny ass seat. You're a little bougie. Yo, Joe Netto is hilarious. The wide hips comment was definitely an I yo moment, but it was funny content. I'm not sure about the full backstory with the hips, but from the reaction of the others, was its own entertainment. This reminds me of one of the topics discussed in the past about weird moments on podcasts, specifically with Mojo Adam and DW Flame. For the record, I understand why DW Flame didn't want to play any of the games that Adam was playing on the platform, 
but that's probably because Adam plays too much and pushes the lines and boundaries as much as possible when playing. Comedy is for everyone, and finding the right time to tell a joke can make or break a show. Joe is putting on a masterclass on how to time this type of joke, right after the person brings it on themselves. But the fact that more fish had to take a first-class flight just for the seat is an interesting story in itself. The question is can you consider what more fish did to be bougie or just better living? More fish took a rental car that he already had and drove close to an hour away because the closer airport didn't have any first-class seats for him. As far as content is concerned, this is a perfect scenario to break down. Calling him bougie is hilarious, especially with the fact that he is trying to deny it. But as far as stepping your game up, who would deny the ability to be able to make these moves at free will? I view it as a perfect inspirational moment for others to step your game up and reach the point and privilege of booking first-class flights by any means necessary. Let's see what's next. I had a slightly bougie moment this weekend. Oh, let me hit. I went to the Benz dealer to get you know me and uh, the car. Uh, uh, check up on the car, uh -huh. and I was going to check in, and they're like, "Oh, oh, you have the 1990." I said, "Yeah." Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I got the 20 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1990 nothing. <laughs> 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 I didn't like that shit. I like that shit. Did you ask them for champagne while you were there? No? No. Okay. They, uh, uh, they didn't offer that for me. Or did you have a little interaction there too, though? Oh, yeah, I met a fan. I met a fan. He was a little upset with me. What'd what you did? I had my coffee first thing in the morning before the Benz dealership, you right? Say, you I had to go outside and smoke, so I had to wait for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Had to use the bathroom. <laughs> Coffee is a diuretic. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit at the Benz. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had to. Yeah, had to. Shit at the Benz. I had to. Nah, the Benz bathroom is nice. It's yeah, it's perfect. Flawless. It's a nice one to shoot. But it's only a one man. man. The nigga said the fan was mad. Yeah, he was like, yo, man, I was, I was about to go to the bathroom. When the <laughs> <laughs> you wiped it up. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the show, though. Oh, my God. Oh, Thanks, man. That's, that's weird. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that's man. Man. Hey, man. You gotta do what you gotta do, <laughs> man. Had a long wait. Now, we rarely get to see Parks it, but he is always adding a dynamic energy and story to the mix. This story was beyond hilarious. From the fact that Parks it was able to make the perfect transition from one bougie story to the other, showed that they are genuinely friends and can relate with each other. Once again, this is an example of better living with Parks at the Mercedes Benz dealer and getting offended that they assumed Parks had had an older model. It's motivational to hear how the others were able to completely relate with Parks as M. Storm asked about the famous champagne that is served to some customers and Joe Netto with the breakdown on how nice the bathrooms are at the Benz dealer. The story of Parks at having to take a dump after drinking too much coffee had two major elements that prove why this podcast is winning effortlessly. First off, the story is hilarious how a fan just happens to be in need of the bathroom as well but refused to enter after Parks had to take care of business. The best part is that the fan, although not able to use the bathroom due to the smell, was still excited enough to shout out Parks and let him know that he was a huge fan of the show. When you are creating authentic and consistent great content, the fans will be willing to endure the worst smells, just to say hello, while holding their breath. Let's see whose weekend is up next. Oh man, I had a little moment this weekend that um, black people. You know how we always be wishing somebody be in our seat sometimes and shit. When you go somewhere, you just you, you want to get that off. Well, I took my baby to the um, to the circus, mm -hmm. and we had the they had like little VIP seat shit. What circus? Mm -hmm. It was some circus. They still got a circus. Circus. They travel with the animals. No, you can't have animals in the circus. Oh, I'm not just like, thank God. No. So what is that? Like, just a nigga with some confetti thrown? <laughs> right. Just clowns. Clowns would be, be trapeze, um, like, acrobats and shit like that, yeah. and stunts yeah. and jokes. That's it. I'm not going to that shit. But it was just some, some you know, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, my, yeah. my baby's four. She had a blast. I'm sure. Walk in. We, we, we They take a, they escort us to our seats. Then we go get some kind of candy real quick, come back. Somebody sitting in my seat already. How was the seats? Right there. Right at the, right at the ring. VIP. Right there. Shit. Right there. It's a moment I've been waiting for. <laughs> Yo, excuse me. Dude, don't say nothing. It's a dude and his wife. All right. Yo, my man, excuse me. Don't say nothing again. Mm -hmm. I swear on everything. I, I want it this moment. He looked up. Yo, you're on my seat. She's like, yo, I told you to not do that. I knew he would come back. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Just, just move. Just move. 
I swear to you. That nigga got up and patted you back. No, he didn't. With your daughter? Okay, you can't. You can't. Was he white or black? He's white. Oh, thank you. Wait a second. Wait a second. Ain't no nigga let you tap his leg, nigga. No, no, no. Hard tap? Right here. Ain't no nigga let you tap his period in front of his wife. Put the shoulder. Put his leg. Yeah. But. But. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get your ass up, get your ass up. Oh, you did that shit to Tad. You ain't no nigga proud of Tad. Whoever was in the seat. Yeah, I know. What you want me to do? That nigga have my tap. baby standing up? Nigga, nah, nah, you right. did the right thing, man. Now this Icy Iceman story is full of some great talking points. First off, honestly, I don't know anyone else who shows the pride of being a girl dad the way that Ice represents the responsibility and privilege. Ice taking his daughter to the circus is something that should be viewed as common and absolutely honorable to be spending quality time. The thing that makes Ice stand out is the fact that he is making it clearly be known that spending time with his daughter is a highlight worth mentioning on one of the biggest podcast platforms. There are countless fans who can relate with this story from either the perspective of having their dad around and doing similar things, or from the viewpoint of growing up without a dad and yearning for experiences like the one that Icy Iceman is explaining. Shoutouts to Ice for standing on business of parenthood for all that can relate. Another gem in this story is the fact that animals are not allowed in the circus anymore. This is a perfect topic to mention because many people might still be confused on what happened, but there was constant animal mistreatment happening behind the scenes of those circus moments, and once the animals started to hurt and harm too many people, changes had to be made. But the funniest part of the story is the fact that the others were questioning if Ice really approached the man who was sitting in his front row seats. Although it was hilarious to mention that Ice probably only addressed the man because he was white, I respect how Icy Iceman stood tall and let everyone know that it didn't matter who it was. If Ice would have done anything different, he could have destroyed the concept of what a man is supposed to do. Right in front of his daughter and girlfriend, shout out to Ice for standing on business. Joe is the last one to tell us his story, so let's see where this goes. I didn't have no story to tell until I heard your story. Now I remember the story. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other day, I think the Uber Eats nigga was trying to kill me. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I never had this experience. It'll be real quick because it wasn't a real story. I don't want to sound racist either. Of course you do. <laughs> I'm going to say a little bit racist. Okay. okay. Sprinkle something in here. Uber Eats, stop hiring anybody that speaks English. That's a fact. That's true. That is true. I, I'm not, I'm not that, being all the way No, you're not. You're that's right. not an observation. It's observant. Yeah, I think yeah, it's going to become racist about what I think about this. I think it's the area, though, that you live in. No, 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 no. No, mm -hmm. no it's Uber Eats. No, I done did this shit all over the world. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, this is when Joe Netto proves that he is the pod father. It was genius to start off the story with that great suspense of his thoughts on his life being in danger from an Uber Eats delivery man. Saying that he thought this was an assassination attempt automatically makes everyone pay closer attention to the details of the story. Now as far as Uber Eats hiring non-English speaking workers, there is absolutely proof to that theory. The simplest way to break it down is to analyze how often we've been hearing that there has been a plethora of new jobs available that the average American citizen is refusing to work. With the recent influx of foreign citizens, it makes sense that there would be an influx in local companies hiring these citizens to fulfill the jobs that others want do. Remember, there is not a complaint that is being made here at all, part of the genius behind Joe. He is speaking on a topic that usually gets people in trouble, but he is delivering his message without offending anyone, while saying enough to make everyone think about the facts he is presenting. Let's hear the rest of the story. Anyway, I know this because when I hit the ring button thing and say, hey dude, just leave it right there at the door, them niggas be like, come on, what? Come on, what? Come down your head. They be up on some, all right, so cool, you guys, my cheese. So this time, the other day, I just run right down. My baby wants some motherfucking whatever chicken shitty you know, run down there. Nigga on a bike. I was gonna ask you, is it a car nigga or a bike nigga? No, I was gonna ask you. It's a nigga on a bike. Tall, tall, super dark skinned, built nigga in funny clothes. Like he just stole these clothes off somebody. <laughs> he got the bike right at my door as soon as I open it. But cool, that means you won't know what your button is. I open the door, he just stand there. He said, Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm saying I got my drawers. <laughs> <laughs> I said, like, right, give, give me the food. 
He's still just standing there. Like, but he's big <laughs> as hell in my pool. I said, yo, man, give me my pool. He started turning around slowly to the microwave heated bag in the back of the bike like it was a gap. <laughs> like, like, he had a fucking pole back there. Man, he turned around so slow with that fool. I'm about to yoke his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and he just held the fool. You know, you're running me. I said, run. hey, give me the fucking fool, nigga. And he just slowly handed it to me. And I slammed my door in his face. And that was it. But I did feel like he was about to kill me. Let me first say, Shout outs to all the Uber Eats workers doing their thing and hustling nonstop in the cars and on the bikes. But this is absolutely hilarious. From the fact that Joe was trying to let him know to just leave the food on the floor, but the delivery man couldn't understand him. To the way that Joe described the guy turning around to get the food like it was a gun, was top tier content. I must admit, I was so caught up in the story at first, that I was getting upset that Joe was speaking so lightly about an assassination attempt. This is part of the genius behind being a great storyteller. The more we are caught up in the story, the more we begin to try to figure out where everything will end up. This is just like a scene from a movie or a funny skit from a comedy show. Let's see what's next. <laughs> yo, them, yo, you know what's so crazy? I flipped on an Uber East driver last week because I think they'd be lying saying that they're in a car with the car on bikes. Right? You can't, can't do, right? you can't do. The nigga had my long pause Pizza Hut box on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the dog shit. On his head. On his head. Yo, yo thank God I was outside. I couldn't believe the fucking balls of this man. Nigga, what are you doing? The so wind is here in the pizza. I called and I flipped on them niggas. <laughs> them niggas be eating our shit. Y'all niggas be disrespecting our food. They take the little sticker the off. The wind is cool. Box is open up. I got my milkshake the other day, she had a straw in it. <laughs> <laughs> now that everyone got their basic stories about their weekends out of the way, the crew is clearly more relaxed, comfortable, and able to remember other moments that they forgot. The story about Flip seeing his Uber Eats guy on a bike, delivering his pizza had me in tears. I know we have all seen delivery guys on bikes with more food than they should probably have, so it was easy to imagine what Flip was describing. The pizza on the delivery guy's hip while the wind is blowing on the pizza is pure comedy. The most relatable and funny moment was when Joe talked about the deliveries potentially being tampered with before it arrives. I can't say that this is something that I can prove happened to me before, but I can certainly remember times when food wasn't as sealed as possible and there was one or two few wings in the box. When Joe describes getting a milkshake with a straw already in it, that was comedy genius and probably the biggest laugh of the episode. Oh, you playing around with me. Nah, yeah, right. Yo, they be wildin'. Nigga yeah, roll with the pizza on the hip. Yo, <laughs> the wind would have cooled the pizza. I couldn't believe, believe I said, hey, how am I supposed to enjoy this? I was crazy. Yeah. That's funny, yeah, son. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Hey, the niggas on the bike is crazy. The niggas do show up with the bike. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, all and he's speeding, too. All the other shit. Why did no. And it makes you respect the Chinese delivery men now, because they take more care of the food, put it in, in, the, in the hot shit. They do. Not the Uber Eats driver. Now Flip just made a great point about showing more love to the Chinese delivery for consistent years of delivering the food without these types of issues we hear from Uber Eats. Once again, this is not even close to a majority of Uber Eats deliveries, especially with me and my account. But the story is hilarious regardless. Big shout outs to the Chinese food delivery service that has been top tier for decades. I literally was planning on going out to a local restaurant for lunch while reviewing this video and had to order some Chinese food just off the memories of perfect deliveries forever. And I honestly never thought about this fact until Flip A. Rain mentioned it. Last week I was starving and after 10 p.m. if you open Uber Eats in New Jersey, mm -hmm. Options are limited True. after 10 p.m. Maybe, over here. Maybe here. <laughs> over here. Yeah. You should move. <laughs> Every part, you say something that reminds me that you should move <laughs> from wherever you at. But, <laughs> yes, options are limited. So I catch them. 958. <laughs> no. Some good shit. I ordered that. Ah, give me that shit. Chill. Man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I went downstairs about an hour later. That food wasn't nowhere near the thing. Really? No. Yeah. So then two the hours thing? later, I go downstairs. That food still ain't there. I open up the app, and get, my, get my refund. But I'm in my drawers. I'll be in my drawers by now. But now at nighttime, midnight, I walk outside. You had the long t-shirt on too? 
I think this is another good time to mention that this simple but deep conversation now about Uber Eats deliveries is going on while the other media platforms are focused strictly on the hip-hop big three rap battle. This is to highlight how the X-Men BP never has to rely on outside sources to produce top-tier content. For all those who tried to order something special at a late time from Uber Eats can relate to this story. After a certain time, your only options are Dunkin' Donuts and other fast food chains that stay open all night. The funniest part is how more fish took a quick shot at Joe Netto by asking him if he had on a long t-shirt. I'm not sure where he was going completely, but I laughed because it reminds me of the mornings when you wake up with your girl and she just throws on one of your shirts to walk around the house. It seemed like Joe took it that way, but he didn't lose his cool and get emotional about it. He accepted it and took it to another level. Just like Eminem did on 8 Mile, when you embrace whatever someone thinks will hurt you, you take away all of their power. As soon as Joe said that he had on Daisy Dukes, he was clearly showing that he is not bothered by anyone thinking anything about him and whatever he might be wearing. This is all funny and great entertainment for all content purposes. Let's hear how this story plays out. <laughs> that nigga put my food on that nigga house way down. Uh, oh, 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 four ounces oh. there. Four ounces there. So now I go get the food in my days to do. That nigga security system is ill. As soon as you step on this shit, lights out. I'm running with my food off the street. You look uh, at him. Hey, son, what you think? I know I look nuts on his ring. Uh, he looked on his ring and then the morning was like, oh, Joe Button, wild. I'm a big fan. You look nuts on my ring camera. This is a hilarious story about Joe trying to get his food by any means necessary. But did anyone catch what was not said? Let me explain. If you have ever had a similar situation when you had to cancel your food delivery because it was not there in time, or said delivered but not at your house, you know that you get your money refunded back to you, but if you realize that the food was delivered to the house across the street or on the side of the block, that food is still exactly what you ordered and now free for whoever can get to it first. This was hilarious because Joe set the story up talking about he was just barely able to place order when the best food was still available. So the fact that he went through a mission impossible journey through a neighbor's yard and porch to get the food adds to the comedic value of the story. The thought of the security lights going off and the ring camera catching the footage of Joe and his Daisy Dukes and long shirt on trying to get a delivery is content genius. Let's see how this segment ends. <laughs> that is hilarious. All y'all in Union City that's getting y'all dogs and cats stolen. Oh, all right, we gonna move on. Come on. We got too much. Oh, they are. Oh, my God. Yeah, it must be a business. That business must be going up. Stealing cats. <laughs> Niggas must want dogs for, for birthdays, the summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They selling them little shit. Especially the Frenchies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Frenchies are Oh, my God. Why sell a brick when I can sell a poodle, nigga? What the fuck you talking about? You always take it to that brick. You always take to that brick, boy. Mm -hmm. Now before we conclude with this content, I am on the East Coast and not too far away from the region that Joe is referring to. And I can vouch that there has been a lot of ring messages about cats, kittens, dogs and puppies being stolen on a daily basis. I hope anyone who is missing a pet safely gets their pet back but this thing is something serious and probably has a task force looking into it already. The content genius is in the way that Joe was able to see how this might lead to some sort of big underworld business focused on stealing and selling these pets. I was waiting to hear from M Storm, especially with her little dog that I'm sure is worth a lot in that market. As a dog owner myself, this is a topic that I can relate to and the uneasy thought of what's going on with stolen pets that are viewed as loved family members is a harsh reality that we have to be aware of and address. Of course. The funniest moment is when more fish shows and proves his greatness and podcast powers. Shoutouts to Benny the Butcher. As soon as I heard more fish say, why sell a brick when you could sell a poodle? I was in tears while thinking that more fish reminds me of that track. Bust a brick Nick. Joe said it best when he simply said, you and that brick. For all fans of the X-Men BP, we've been hearing more fish make these types of references before and I'm sure we will hear them again. But the point that I take from it personally is that you can elevate from your past, but that doesn't mean that you have to look down on your past. I will explain. Just because he had a past with the bricks, 
doesn't mean that he has to look down on what that brick really means. Once you are out of the streets and away from that lifestyle, you can see the brick as a metaphor for other things in life. I must admit that this is how I view the animation realm. Let me thank you all for testing out the purity of my animated yayo. Thank you for your exceptional support, and if you're new, like, subscribe, share, and join the phenomenal comment section where some funny jokes and genius points are made and debated. Until next time, sending positive thoughts and vibes to everyone. Never forget, every day that you wake up is like receiving a winning lottery ticket. It's all on you to cash out and reinvest your earnings.